Faiza Shaheen was one of Labour's most impressive candidates at the last general election. She was director of the trade union-backed think tank Class, and she's from the constituency in which she stood, Chinkford and Woodford Green. Shaheen would go on to lose to Ian Duncan Smith by just over 1,000 votes, the smallest margin ever in what had traditionally been a safe Tory seat. And this weekend, she won the chance to stand again to be Chinkford's MP. Labour List reported that almost 50% of members in the constituency turned up to Shaheen's selection meeting, and by voting for her, they went against the wishes of all neighbouring Labour MPs. Take a look at this graphic shared by Shaheen's opponent before the vote. Shadow Foreign Secretary David Lammy and Shadow Health Secretary Wes Streeting both found time to endorse Shaheen's rival, but Shaheen won anyway. It was an impressive victory for an impressive candidate, but what followed was both predictable and depressing. Ian Leslie is author of books such as How to Disagree. He proved his commitment to pluralism by tweeting this, the selection of an unreconstructed Corbynite to a very winnable seat is an indicator of how much work Starmer has to do to remake the party, an unreconstructed Corbynite. Another figure to comment was former Labour MP Ian Austin. Austin campaigned against Labour in the 2019 election before being appointed to the House of Lords by Boris Johnson. He said this, Corbyn supporter Pfizer Shaheen, who said attacks on him were lies, has been selected to stand for Labour again. This was the attached video. It's a segment on Newsnight from after the 2019 general election result. It features Pfizer Shaheen and Jack Straw. What is safe to say is it didn't go down well with the electorate. It's the worst result. Would you change a lot about your manifesto? Look, from the conversations I was having on the doorstep, it was less about the manifesto, more about, I guess, the demonisation of Jeremy Corbyn and how that had really sunk in with people. Um, I think it, it was less about specific policies so in the manifesto. Leader, the it was your leader, not the message. It was the way in which business. the leader has been portrayed, and that's a very different, right? That's and you can't, you can't. Why, how okay, can so you make that noise when time and time again we've seen so many lies? I'm not saying Jeremy Corbyn's perfect. Of course he's not, but. You know, we've had news nights where they've made him look like um, like a, a Russian. You know, we've ha had newspaper stories where he t they talk about him as a Czech spy. I mean, it's ridiculous. Sorry, can I just, so say, it, can like, I, can I just say at that point, do you, and I'll let Jack Straw respond, but do you not think that the British people can make up their own minds? You, you're sort of talking about the media like it's got a vice onto people. They also read manifestos. They look at leaflets. They see and read their own things out there. Why did you, you why see, did, why did you sigh there, Jack you Straw? See, don't you see how the media and the fact that our press is so biased? When was the last time we had a prime minister that was chosen that wasn't supported by Rupert Murdoch, for instance? Right? Of course, he was subject to attack, but I'm afraid it wasn't the media who made up the anti-Semitism over which, and even uh, Len McCluskey has, has said that uh, Jeremy Cusby did, did, did insufficient, uh, uh, Jeremy Corbyn did far too little about that and too late. He, that was Corbyn. It wasn't Cor the press who made up that Jeremy Corbyn had, got, had played footsie with terrorist organisations like Hamas and Hezbollah. I mean, and, and, to, and I have seen him do this defend the provisional IRA when they were letting off bombs, killing innocent people in this country. I mean, we're not that cuts their, through. You're not rerunning their lines again. I mean, what we've got to talk about is what true. did work and what hasn't so worked you, and what we can like. That tweet from Ian Austin was jumped on by journalist Noah Hoffman, who tweeted, Labour has selected a huge Corbyn supporter and a person who campaigned with Ken Loach, who has made disturbing comments about the Holocaust and Labour anti-Semitism, to stand as a candidate in the next general election. Noah Hoffman, who I'm sure is a committed anti-racist, works as a political reporter at The Sun. Ash, it was an impressive win from Pfizer Shaheen and a depressingly predictable response. What do you make of it all? OK, I'm going to start with the positive stuff first, because I think sometimes we can get a bit caught up in the negative. And one of the things to really hammer home about Pfizer Shaheen is that she is a very gifted media communicator. She has a PhD, she's a trained economist, and she's somebody who, through her knowledge of her constituency, she grew up there, her ability at bringing out people to campaign for her, nearly unseated Ian Duncan Smith in 2019, which is a year where across the country, the vote was swinging away from Labour. Pfizer Shaheen was able to defy 
the direction of travel nationally to make something different happen in Chingford and Woodford Green. Now, it didn't happen enough to get her over the line, but that tells you that regardless of whether or not you personally agree with her politics, I'm not asking everyone to look at Pfizer Shaheen and go, she perfectly represents all the things that I stand for. You know, if you're a Blairite, fine, have that disagreement with her. But you cannot deny that she is a really well-qualified political candidate. And if what you want to do is say she shouldn't be the candidate for Chingford and Woodford Green, you're going to have to take her on on her own terms. Now, that's kind of impossible because, as I've said, she has proved her worth to the Labour Party. So instead, what we've seen kick into gear is a smear operation based on association, innuendo and dog whistles. And I'm afraid to say that this is exactly the kind of hierarchy of racism that the Ford report described. Um, Ian Leslie, who you just quoted from, uh, also quoted an excerpt from an interview with Pfizer Shaheen where she talked about experiencing racism on the doorstep, that as a Muslim woman, she was called a terrorist by someone on the doorstep. And she remarked on feeling very unsupported by the party. She remarked on the different status that was afforded to Islamophobia compared to anti-Semitism. Now, looking at that, which again, regardless of whether or not you personally agree with her politics, you would say, this is a pretty serious account of having experienced racism as a Muslim woman of color in the field of politics. Ian Leslie went instead, oh, look, see, she's blaming the voters for her loss rather than looking at herself, looking at the leadership. Now, that is exactly an example of that hierarchy of racism where you can look at an account of Islamophobia and go, "Mm, that kind of sounds like a you problem. Um, And I think when it comes to the way in which 2019 is being litigated via Pfizer Shaheen, it is very depressing because stating plain facts, which is that the smear operation against Jeremy Corbyn was based on lies, right? The check spy thing, that was a fucking lie. The Chairman Mao style bicycle was, you know, if if it was hysterical um, as much as it was absurd. And that a lot of the stories which made up the bulk of being able to present him as some kind of died in the wall racist were either false or misreported. Of course, there were problems in the Labour Party Of course, those problems weren't acted on fast enough. And indeed, the Ford report goes into some detail about why that happened. But a lot of what coloured our understanding of Jeremy Corbyn was not fair and impartial reporting. To state that plain fact means that Emma Barnett steps in. And though Jack Straw is the person who's supposed to debate her, is the one almost standing up for the smear operation. And the reason why is because she thinks it's perfectly legitimate for the press to operate as a wing of establishment politics and dictate who gets to participate and who doesn't. And it just struck me so disingenuous when she intervened and said, oh, can the British people not make up their own mind? Well, maybe they can't, Emma, if you're lying to them all the time. That is the point of having a fair and impartial and honest and accurate media. It means that people are able to make up their mind with the facts, not just with any old bullshit some disgruntled Labour staffer or some right-wing wingnut has texted you that day, Emma, but I digress. Um, I think, well done, Pfizer Shaheen. I personally wouldn't have had the emotional resilience to come back to a place which had been a site of so much pain. And I think that that in itself deserves some recognition. Um, I think that she's a really capable candidate. And I think she will come under specific attacks because she is left wing and she's a woman of color and she's Muslim, but she's more than equipped to take them on. Let's have a look at what Pfizer Shaheen had to say um, about the Ferrari on Twitter after her selection. So I tweeted my solidarity um, to her this weekend, and this is her response. I'm ignoring the haters, Michael. Next week, I'm meeting the Indonesian government to discuss how they can deliver a Green New Deal. These guys acting like I'm not good enough have no idea what they're talking about. I will not be bullied. Although, saying that, I'm not making the same mistake as others. I have a libel lawyer ready, so if you see anything, direct message me. Now, I've already seen some high follower accounts delete their Shaheen-related tweets this weekend. So let's hope this strategy is already working. And it goes without saying, all power to Pfizer Shaheen. Shaheen. 